Stephen, as you may or may not know at this point. Welcome to my speech. Today we're going to talk about why Medicare for All is a necessity. I'm a critical source because I personally have arthritis and have had uh, four different doctors before I got one that told me that I actually had arthritis. Uh, as well as I've been on about three or four different medications uh, for various reasons to help me deal with that. My mom also works as a occupational therapist, so I have a little bit more of an insight into the world of healthcare. And today we're going to be talking about, as I said, why Medicare for All is a necessity. The bill proposed by Senator Sanders, who is unfortunately no longer in the race, still not writing Canada though, and could be yours as well. But to get into our main points, first we're going to be talking about why it is necessary. Because healthcare, basic human right. So something that I don't think is a very controversial statement based on our audience polls. Uh, as well as Medicare for All, or socialized healthcare, also known as Medicare for All. Uh, will help more people get access to health care than they normally would. Uh, and third, finally, we're going to be talking about how, despite all its flaws, we as a people can come together and do it and make the good outweigh the bad. To get us started, I'm going to talk about a quote from Michael Sinato uh, for The Guardian on January 7, 2020. As much as 25% of the population are delayed in getting medical help because of skyrocketing costs. For a little bit of perspective here, the population of the United States as of 2018 was 327.2 million people. That means roughly 81.8 .8 million people are delayed in getting health care because they can't afford it. Uh, and it goes even further than that. According to Dan Witters of Gallup on November 12th, 2019, 34 million Americans know someone who has died after not getting the treatment and 58 million people report inability to buy medications. Now, for, uh, for a little bit more reference, that 58 million people uh, who can't buy medications because it's too expensive, that's roughly 18% of the population as of 2018. Uh, that means that almost just about one in every five people can't afford a medication they need that's been prescribed to them by a doctor to help them with something that affects their daily life. Uh, and as you can see, on the chart here, which is a little bit hard to read on the camera, but if you open up the presentation on your own computer, it'll be make a lot more sense. Uh, the amount of people that know someone who's died in previous years uh, can actually be broken down as it's se seen as more non-white people and more poor people and more younger people uh, seem to know people who have died not getting health care. As well as when we look at the drug uh, the, drug com the drug prices, you can see that overall, drug pr more, pe more and more people from January of 2019 to September of 2019 have been unable to get uh, prescription drugs that they need, myself included. So it hits home a little bit for me, and I'm sure it hits home for some of you also. So we're going to be talking about why Medicare for All will help with this now. According to Bernie Sanders can uh, on his campaign site on uh, an unknown date, Medicare for All is a single-payer national health insurance program to provide everyone in America with comprehensive health care coverage free at the point of service. Basically, that means whatever you need, whenever you need it, you're going to get it. You're not going to have to pay for it. It helps to bring forth the idea that Medicare is a basic human, or that <laughs> health care is a basic human right. Um, and to emphasize, emphasize just a little bit more why, this might, why we might want this, uh, according to Ben Zipper and Josh Bivens on working economics as of April 12th, 2020, we, they estimate that approximately 3.5 million workers were at high risk of losing their employer-provided health, health insurance in the past two weeks because the U.S. is unique among rich countries in that health insurance is tied to employment. Now, they're specifically talking about the past two weeks because of coronavirus, as we all are aware, and the fact that almost 3.5 million people could lose their health insurance because they're losing their job. It doesn't make any sense. Why are we allowing this to happen? When you look at it, Medicare for All will allow it so that we never have to worry about losing our health care because of our job. We'll be able to have a lot more employer, employment freedom where we can move around and get different jobs and better jobs because we don't have to worry about losing our health care when we have some kind of arthritis or dementia, <laughs> right? You, it's... Medicare for All, it helps people to get what they need when they need it, no matter what the circumstance. 
However, this can bring us into our next point. One of the main issues that people have, or, or final point, actually, one of the main issues that people have with the idea of socialized healthcare is wait times. Uh, people believe it's shown that wait times are a little bit longer in countries that do have public versus private healthcare. The people who are on the public healthcare side tend to have slightly longer wait times. But according to an anonymous author of Procon.org on February 14, 2019, a Commonwealth study found that due to a lack of uh, timely and effective health care in the United States, uh, it is the worst rich nation in preventing, uh, in, prevent, in stopping preventable mortality. Basically, that means we're already having people get taken off, get not get the treatment they need because either they don't have insurance or their insurance won't pay for it. So it doesn't make any sense to leave insurance around when they're not going to help us, even though that's literally what we pay them to do. And that's why it's illegal to not have insurance. Um, but then for our another point that people tend to make is that according to Kimberly Amato for The Balance on March 13th, 2020, healthy people will be paying for other people's Medicare, which for a lot of people, that's a big issue. But when, when it comes down to it, it comes down to the idea of altruism and helping your fellow neighbors. When you look at it, it said money is power. It's also said with great power comes great responsibility. So it's up to the people who have the money to help those who don't so that they can have a decent quality of life. Just because you can't afford shoes doesn't mean you should die in a hole because so you, can, you got shot on the south side. Right? You should be able to get the treatment you need. Right? Um, even if that means that you have to help pay for other people's insurance, overall it's better for us as a society to take the money that we would be normally putting into our health insurance and just put it out there for everyone to use and help each other out. In the end, we talked about why uh, healthcare is a basic human right. We also talked about how Medicare for All will help us to secure this as a basic human right. And finally, we talked about why some of the main issues with it might not be as big of a deal as we thought. Anyway, thank you for coming to my speech.